Okay, let's move on to game three. Uh, solid knight f3 Reti from Kasparov. And this was answered by knight f6. Wait and see what, what white will do. Now the English opening is transposed into c4. After e6, knight c3, we're transposing actually into a variation of the queen's gambit declined. And now bishop f4 from Kasparov. So the bishop is quite annoying on this diagonal. It has some targets. It has some uh, pressure implications on the dark squares. E3, it's very solid for white. Bishop D3, now Nigel takes on C4, so he's making sure his bishop's going to be reasonable on the diagonal. After castles, knight BD7. And black's usual sort of freeing maneuver here would be C5, freeing pawn break. Uh, but in this position, actually, quite interesting uh, move, bishop D6. And uh, Kasparov actually avoided the exchange of bishops here. Uh, engine uh, recommendation is taking and then bishop a6. I'm not sure this will end up with anything of great significance, this kind of continuation. Uh, black seems solid enough. As long as there aren't any uh, major structural weaknesses, uh, the pressure should be able to be soaked up here for black. So I think that's about equal. So um, the tension was kind of maintained actually, avoiding the exchange of pieces. Bishop g5. And white still has potentially, you know, e4, e5 now, which would be more effective with these two pieces there. h6 was played now, bishop h4. And now a6. So black with a6 is has the idea of maybe b5, b4 later. And in fact, immediately plays b5. And now uh, plays queen e7, which looks as though it might be useful for a break like e5 soon, to play e5. Um, after e4 though, now we have a tactical skirmish after b4. White cannot move the knight without losing e4. So e5, we have uh, an imbalance of material now. White's gaining the dark square bishop, uh, but has slightly fractured pawns here. So is the dark square bishop giving white a small edge here, or is black's kind of more compact pawn structure here? Um, in you know holds it in the balance uh, after queen e7 that's an unpinning move sorry queen f8 unpinning the knight actually making the knight able to to use h5 soon um, with f4 as a potential square used by black now this is quite clever now knight h5 so queen e3 guarding f4 for a moment now knight df6 make sure g4 is not on the cards knight e1 so rerouting the knight somewhere, either d3 or c2. Now g5 was played, very energetic play from Nigel, and he might be able to sort of finketo his queen as well on that diagonal, perhaps. Uh, but after bishop g3, he's got also a decision, does he want to take off this bishop, or leave it eyeing the d6 pawn? If it's eyeing the d6 pawn, the black queen is tied looking after that d6 pawn. Okay, so a5 actually keeping the tension here, not playing knight takes g3 uh, just yet. So a3, giving the bishop a pigeonhole on, on a2 now if a4 is played, which might be useful if white wants to maintain the option of d5 later with a pawn supported by that bishop on a2, that might be useful. So bishop a2 now, and then bishop e4 eyeing the b1 square. So black seems to have possession temporarily of the b file. Queen c3. These hanging pawns um, are either an asset or a liability. Here they're, they're kind of restrained, um, not blockaded but restrained from c5. The queen's on c5, the rook's on c5. So queen d8 actually is now played because actually the queen c3 was actually attacking the pawn as well. Something had to be done about that. Knight c2. The knight looks set to go to e3 which might support d5. Bishop g6, now actually f3, as though the bishop's rerouting here, which might support c5. But it, uh, now knight d5, using that tactical pin uh, to gain a tempo on the queen. Knight d f4. So it looks as though black's position doesn't look too bad. Okay, he's got a slightly weak pawn over here. These hanging pawns um, are a little bit controversial. Uh, but there's no big problems, it seems, for black. He, he has that b file asset. And in fact, um, Nigel is about to miss a major opportunity. He gets into knight d3 and he weakens the dark squares here. 
in Kasparov's camp. And knight f4, g3, creating some weaknesses around the king actually. Um, knight g4, as though this is backfiring on black, because now there's h4 and there's pressure on these two uh, pawns. King h7, now h4. Now here is a critical moment, actually. Uh, it's coming up to a critical moment, rather, uh, where Queen b2 was played, putting more pressure on white. So Kasparov is actually, he's in big trouble because of this b-file. It's quite a big deal, this b-file. And this bishop maneuver was quite clever to, to make use of that b-file. And this entry on b2 is unwelcome. And white's kind of attack at the moment um, needs you know h file support, but that's not going to happen with a queen sitting on b2. There's not going to be an h file rook at the moment. Rook e3, and it's here that black could have struck with a non intuitive like bishop blocking move. Uh, Nigel here, maybe a bit cautious, did a prophylaxis type move, king g7 away from the h file, but in fact, it seems a precise move f5. Uh, was needed. So if the knight retreats now, knight takes g3, and this would be uh, kind of winning the exchange and would be very nasty for white. So this was missed, and it's it's virtually kind of forced. There's an unfortunate situation here with knight g3, king g3, and this f5, f4 uh, is a very unfortunate, embarrassing tactical opportunity that black had, it seems. But now um, it's gone. The, the moment passes because King G7 was played. So I'm not sure really what Garrick's path would do here. He can't play Knight F6. The Knight's got hitting F6. Um, let's. I mean, he can't play Rook H1. The Queen, you know, the the Queen is is being attacked on D2. Uh, let's actually give some options. See, was actually White busted here? Um, Knight H2 is actually like given as the best move. <laughs> But say c5 is an alternative, just offering the knight sack, you know, for maybe for an h file attack. It does seem quite nebulous here. Uh, there's no real attack because because white's kind of stuck because of that queen on b2. So if if after f5, uh, knight takes best move, this looks fairly miserable. Uh, that either knight takes g3 or even f4 is is very it's all strong. If you can see the analysis here in this position, g takes, knight takes, very nice knight, but we've got a very weak pawn, knight d3. Uh, the d3 square needs to be heavily guarded. So this is also kind of very nasty as well. But uh, perhaps more clear cut in this position is just simply knight takes g3. All right, how would white counter? Say rook takes e6. This might be much better than losing the exchange, actually. Rook takes e6. F4. This is this is the way white should play it. Knight f1. And um, here, though, black, from past the analysis, is still increasing his advantage. He's got a nicely entrenched knight, and he's threatening rook b2. And this is still very, very dangerous for white. So let's go to a variation recorded earlier. Knight takes rook b2 uh, is a disaster. Bishop b1. Black will end up like being a bishop up here. So this this is a nasty situation. The moment passed. Nigel played king g7, and it seems Kasparov was able to exchange off queens now, put his knight on h2 without too much penalty. Now now that there isn't a rook on e3. Knight g3 is not really on gets his knight out of trouble, centralizes it, doesn't mind knight g3 now, it's only picking up temporarily a pawn, he's getting it back. So we're still dead equal on pawns here, four pawns each, uh, with those hanging pawns still in the picture. Are they ever going to move? They don't need to just yet. Now, finally, the hanging pawns are resolved, leaving an isolated pawn. Transition to one isolated, or you could call it a passed pawn, it's a double-edged pawn again. But white, even though he's losing that c pawn now, he's got enough to draw this. Uh, so a few more moves were played, and after king e4, I think a draw was agreed here. Uh, black doesn't have enough going on here to win this. It's a, it's a draw. 
It's a clear draw. So uh, let's have a look at that game again. A very solid game uh, from White. We do see some more adventurous openings in other games than this match, actually. So this is one of the more solid um, choices uh, for both players. Uh, so that f4 square was highlighted. And um, if black could follow that with as much energy on the queen side as the king side, might have been able to score full points here. So this is starting to be uh, very critical for white, this position. Um, hg does does mean that f5 is now on the cards because before it would have been an unpassant and you know f5 is now kicking the knight and exploiting the fact that the rooks on e3 with this knight g3 idea but uh, i suppose f5 doesn't look like an intuitive move to play it's easy with you know hindsight and engine nice to say this is this is the way to play but uh this this would have to you know, this is an invitation for rook e6, which looks a bit scary actually for the seventh rank attack. So some empathy ne is needed here. Why Nigel Short didn't play this continuation? Um, it's 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 just this knight on g3, and this idea of queen a3 is very dangerous. So the knight's actually um, not quick enough to exploit. It's why it hasn't got the time to really exploit it without queen a3 being horrible. So with the, the rook over there. This this side, you know, the, the rook was protecting a3, so this requires deep, you know, technical analysis actually. So I think we can let, let Nigel off not playing f5. Uh, but uh, after king g7, uh, we started to see some simplification. The hanging pawn turned into an isolated stroke pass pawn, and then we have a transition into a drawn rook and pawn ending. Um, hope you got something from that. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.